Chapter 22 The pretended liberty of conscience is against the National League and Covenant, and the ordinances of the Parliament of England engaged by oath for a reformation of religion. Amidst our greatest fears, and the enlarged sorrows of our heart for the calamitous condition of our dear brethren in England, by reason of a natural war, raised by a prelatical, popish, and malignant party, tending to the destruction of the kingdom, subversion of religion, laws, and liberties, we exceedingly rejoiced when the Lord, mighty in counsel, did lay in Zion the foundation of a hopeful building, and stirred up the spirits of the honorable houses of Parliament, to declare to the commissioners of the General Assembly of the Kirk of Scotland their sense of church government, by archbishops, bishops, etc., to be dishonorable to God, by arrogating to themselves a preeminence and power which he had not given, justly offensive to the kingdom, a great impediment to the growth of religion, and promising to remove the same. Desiring for the obtaining of a happy union with the Church of Scotland, and other reformed churches abroad, the General Assembly to send to the Assembly of Divines at Westminster some godly and learned divines of that church, whereby in uniformity, in form of church government, might be obtained, and thereby a more easy passage made to the settling of one confession of faith, one liturgy or directory of public worship, and one catechism in all the three kingdoms. And when, for our faithfulness to our brethren in sending an army to England to help them, the enemy had wasted our land, and we were given for lost, and filled with a cup of astonishment, of waters of gall and wormwood, in our greatest midnight darkness, it was to us the morning dawning of the flourishing condition of the Isle of Britain, when we did reap first fruits of that blessed union of both kingdoms, by that national covenant with the Lord the Most High, and of the three kingdoms amongst themselves, never to be forgotten. And when we received the directory for the public worship of God throughout the three kingdoms, passed an ordinance of Parliament in each kingdom. But now we are stricken with amazement exceedingly, when we reap no other fruit of our expensive blood, way station of our kingdom, attendance on this assembly four years, but instead of the nearest uniformity of the churches of God in the three kingdoms in religion, confession of faith, a form of church government, the rectory for worship and catechizing, a far more capacious and wide deformity in all these than there was before our taking of the covenant, yea, or since Christian religion came first into this island. When we see a licentious toleration in one of the three kingdoms of all forms and ways of serving God, established by law, and no limitation nor bordering provided to hedge in the fleshy and lawless exorbitances of men, whose apprehensions and fancies of the one only true God in three distinct persons, and of his revealed will and his word, are now by nature vain, superstitious, idolatrous, blasphemous, impure, and devilish, save only a poor, narrow, and dubious circle of some few fundamentals that may be, and are, by men of corrupt minds, changed into lies and blasphemies. We, therefore, the commissioners of the Kirk of Scotland, according to the trust committed to us, are necessitated in the name of Jesus Christ, the only King, and head of his church, and at the commandment, and in the name of the Kirk of Scotland, to protest, and by these presents do protest and declare against the said pretended toleration as followeth. Number one. Such liberty is inconsistent with and repugnant to the word of God. Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 through 3, to verse 12. Romans 13, 1 through 3, compared with Philippians 3, 2, and 2 John 10, where false teachers are called evildoers. So Ezra 7, verses 23 through 28. Nehemiah 13, verses 15, 17, 21, 22, 25, and 30. Second Chronicles 34, verse 33. Second Chronicles 15, verses 12, 13, 16, and 17. Second Kings 23, verses 5, 6, 9, 20, and 21. Daniel 3, verse 29. Daniel 6, verse 26. First Timothy 2, verse 2. Revelation 17, verses 12, 16, and 17. Zechariah 13, verses 1 through 6. Isaiah 49, verse 23. Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Leviticus 20, verse 26. Deuteronomy 17, verses 2 and 3. Exodus 32, verses 26 through 29. Numbers 25, verses 1 through 3. Deuteronomy 28, verses 18 to 22. And Joshua 22, verses 10 and 11. Number 2. God severely avengeth and plagueth breach of covenant, either with the Lord himself or men. We therefore appeal to the righteous judge of the whole earth, whose dreadful name is engaged in this covenant. 
nor can we imagine that this covenant is temporary. But we swear to continue in this blessed union all the days of our life zealously and constantly. Nor hath the Lord instanced his divine image of making just laws upon any non-methodic power of the most free and independent kingdom on the earth. So as the breach of lawful promises, covenants, contracts, which are against the law of God, of nature, of nations, should or can be the subject matter of any non-methodic power. For God gives no power to make unjust decrees. The pretended liberty is against the articles, matter, and ends of the covenant. A parliamentary power interposed for the not punishing of deformity, as touching many religions, must destroy the commanded nearest uniformity of the one only true religion. Secondly, nor can they defend the one only reformed religion of Scotland commanding the magistrate, the minister of God, to use the sword against false teachers, who give liberty to all religions. Thirdly, nor can the word of God be our rule of reformation, except this rule be one, and enjoin one only true religion, and forbid toleration of all others. Fourthly, there can be no way so prevailing to promote, cherish, and foment heresy, and what is contrary to sound doctrine, as for public authority by law to permit it, except that we would praise and reward such fleshy, fleshly ways. Fifthly, the Lord cannot be one nor his name one in both kingdoms, when by law multitudes of names, ways, and religions are tolerated. Sixthly, many religions suffered must be contrary to the true religious liberty of Christian states and churches, when men are licensed to profess slavery and bondage to the efficacy and power of error to believe, profess, and disseminate lies and blasphemies in the name of the Lord. Seventh, many false ways of religions doth in the scripture argue a change of gods, for these that are no gods, which heathens do abhor, Jeremiah 2, verses 9 through 11, and a multiplying of gods according to the number of each sect and society, Jeremiah 2, verse 28, and a manifest countenancing of skepticism, of many gods and of no god. Since then the parliament, not only as Christian men, but as a parliament, and as magistrates have sworn the covenant, they must swear each one of them to defend his own religion, familism, Arianism, antinomianism, which he believes to be the true religion, and that as a magistrate with the sword of God, and so to oppose his fellow members with his parliamentary power. How then can the Parliament command others, or engage themselves to the Lord their God, to endeavor the preservation of the one reformed religion in Scotland, that we in our posterity may live in faith and love? For this is many faiths professedly different, and that the Lord may delight to dwell in the midst of us, and this is many gods in the midst of us, and that we shall endeavor the extirpation of heresy, superstition, profaneness, and whatsoever shall be found contrary to sound doctrine. It is not every parliament man, who by law may be of any religion, obliged by the oath of God to endeavor the extirpation of the true Protestant religion, since to him, who is a familist and antinomian, it is heresy and contrary to sound doctrine. Are not papists, though known papists, to be judges and members of parliament? Why should they be debarred for their religion? And they must by this oath endeavor the extirpation of heresies and heretics, that is, of Protestants. Number 8. The foresaid licentiousness is contrary to the endeavor to preserve the rights, liberties of parliaments, and just power and greatness of the king. Now, both king, parliaments, and all rulers have the sword committed to them to defend the church against seducers, wolves, heretics, false teachers and by the sword are to stand against the violation of mercy, righteousness, and the peace of humane societies, and so against such as from mere grounds of conscience serve God in sacrificing their children to God, promiscuous use of wives, a part of the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, community of goods, robbing the just owners of their inheritances and profession, uh, possessions, excuse me, because the word saith, the meek shall inherit the earth, lying and denying of our religion before men, for should the magistrate kill the father whose only conscience, not hatred, which is the only essential ingredient, to make killing of our own neighbor without lawful authority, that murdering of our brother, which by the law of God and man is punishable with death, Deuteronomy 19, verses 11 through 13, as well as Deuteronomy 4, verse 42, and Deuteronomy 19, verse 4, and the sword of the magistrate, 
Not any hatred, I say, or desire of revenge toward his son, whom he loves as tenderly as Abram did Isaac, presseth out of mere religious obedience to God to offer his son to God in a sacrifice. He should not punish a murderer, but offer violence to the conscience of his father, since the word of God condemneth this as false worship, not as murder. Yea, as superstition, as superstitious adding to the word, excuse me, and as will worship, Deuteronomy 4, verses 31 and 32, as well as Jeremiah 7, verses 30 and 31. Number 9. Diverse religions being contrary to Christ and the one truth of the gospel of their own nature raise fire and sword between brethren and the mother against the daughter-in-law and must be a seminary of factions and divisions which is destructive to the unity of our co in our covenant. Micah 7 verses 5 and 6 Matthew 10 verses 34 and 35 Luke 5 verses 51 and 52 and Genesis 3.16 Tenth by which it cannot be possible, we should defend one another in this common cause of religion, except the reconciliation be made between the seed of the woman and the serpent. Number 11. And many, being of diverse religions, must need give themselves to a detestable indifference and neutrality as touching the common cause of God, since it cannot be the common cause of God but of Satan, and of forcing conscience by persecution to them. Many men, Yea, it is the cause of God to many to hate and persecute the gospel by this.